The treasure trove of anti-apartheid spy missions is helping place South Africa on a global map of cryptocurrency innovation. A spy pen, once gifted to former ANC President Oliver Tambo by the East Germans, has been transformed into a non-fungible token known as an NFT. Well, the image is a unique digital asset that has been loaded on a blockchain account by virtual nation builders. Once auctioned off on Thursday, the earnings from the NFT will be used to help save the Lilies Leaf Museum in Johannesburg. The former secret headquarters of the ANC has been battling to stay open since the pandemic struck. Well, to demystify the complex world of NFTs, we're joined by Maurice Crespi. He's the CEO of Virtual Nation Builders. Maurice, thank you so much for joining us. For a novice like myself, what is a non-fungible token? Help me. Okay, most, most people um, who try and explain what an NFT is just simply get it wrong. Um, or it's just far too complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and approach it from an attorney's perspective. I'm an attorney, I'm not a tech. And I think it's important that we go back to 2017, where we had the Bitcoin bubble. Now, in 2017, in America, there were a group of very, very clever individuals who, said, who looked at Bitcoin and they said, if we can, if Bitcoin works and um, we, we, there's this general ledger around the world, why don't we create a hard drive and a, a worldwide hard drive, let's call it. And we do so by asking members of the public, people with computers, to give a portion of their hard drive space to this network. And in giving the portion of the hard drive space to the network, they'll get compensated for that. And that's how the Ethereum network was born, is this giving this decentralization where this, uh, this hard drive is created, where information can be stored on this hard drive, um, but no one can delete it. And that's the blockchain technology. So it cannot be deleted, it can be stored, and no one controls the information on this, uh, on this network. So viewers will see it as a, a hard drive that's come into play that no one controls. And when you put data on this hard drive, no one can change it. Literally no one can change it, no one can delete it. Only you have access to that if you want it. But that is the data that you put on and that data will remain on this hard drive for the next 800 years, the next 2000 years, so long as people give out their space on their hard drives for the network, it exists. Now, imagine taking a 3D model of your house and you decide to store it on the hard drive. You put it on the hard drive, that 3D model of your house is going to remain in existence for the next 800 years because it's immutable. It doesn't change. This hard drive does not change. Now, I put this house on this hard drive I have access to my house. Let's say it's a photorealistic copy of my house. I have access to it and I have control of it. Now, what if I want to give control to somebody else of my house, that 3D image? Well, there may be value in giving control of that asset. And the value of giving control of the asset is really what you get compensated for as an NFT. So this is where an NFT comes in. You put an asset on the hard drive. In this case, for the auction, we put the gun pen on the hard drive. It's going to be there for the next thousand years. So long as humanity or the internet exists, it's going to be there. And what happens is we say, if you want control of this asset, you can have control of this asset, but you must pay a fee. Now, why would you want an asset on this hard drive? Only two weeks ago, Facebook came out and they said, look, the internet is moving towards a metaverse type environment. They've actually changed their name to meta. So we're gonna be trading, we're going to be living in a metaverse with goggles, virtual reality goggles that we're gonna put on and we're going to, it's already happened. I mean, it actually started, it happened in 2004 with a, a, a program called Second Life, but it's far, far more advanced now and that's going to be the new internet. Now, let's say you purchase the gun and it's on this hard drive um, what you then have is possession of that in the meta world. And you can use it, you can trade it. If you want to show people it, you can. Uh, if you don't want to show people the gun, you don't have to. Um, you can sell it. Let's say Facebook in their metaverse want to create a museum. You can say to Facebook, here, I'll give you access to this gun for a fee. So that's essentially what's happening 
in, 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 in broad okay. strokes. But the beauty is, yes. Uh, Maurice, that was very well explained. Thank you so much. It was comprehensive. I want to know more yeah. about the pen itself, because that spy stuff fascinates me. And where does the bidding start? Well, we, we, the, the bidding, there is no reserve on the bidding. Um, the pen was a pen that was uh, given uh, to Lily's Leaf by Ronnie Castrol. In fact, he's kind enough to actually record a video uh, explaining the nature and the source of the pen. And we took a team, Virtual Nation Builders took a team to scan the pen and to tokenize it. So now we have an asset, a replica on that hard drive that I was talking about. And that preserves the heritage forever. And when, when somebody purchases the asset, they get the asset and the money then goes straight in terms of the blockchain technology into the Lily's Leaf coffers without there being anybody in between. There's nobody that has to be in between as the auction takes place, as the bid is accepted, it goes straight to Lily's Leaf. And that's the beauty of blockchain technology. And that's what we're exploiting uh, uh, tomorrow to usher in what we call a new system of benevolent capitalism where you have direct access to the source. So if Facebook were to want to uh, donate money, let's say, to individuals who are, are identified on the blockchain, they can. You can scan in, for instance, okay. a, a, a check of an individual, tokenize that, and Facebook will have access to actually uh, send cash to that check subject to certain conditions that they wanted. It's All going right. to revolutionize the world. Maurice, thank you so much. It's fascinating, and I think uh, we're going to be seeing far more of this. Thanks uh, again, Maurice Crespi, the CEO of blockchain company Virtual Nation Builders.